well, here I go. Uh, welcome to another Moto Moment. I'm going to take a few minutes and just show you a way to use a procedural texture that comes with Moto and use that to drive a displacement map. Uh, it's basically another way of doing what Mutant Pixel did in this video. Right? James Darknell spent about 20 minutes walking you through a little project here that's a really clever use of uh, using a driver to uh, use a procedural texture to make some of his pumpkins work. It's a really cool tutorial and you should check this one out. It's got some neat little tricks in it. All right, I'm using almost the same idea but just a little bit different. Uh, that's all this is, is just another way of doing some of the same things. While it's not exactly the same thing it's pretty close. Right, get a stylized pumpkin using some of uh, what Moto has to offer out of the box. Right, so I'll move this out of the way. All right, so here's the little model. This is not a modeling tutorial, so I'm not walking you through any of that. This is just nothing but a little shader trick. Right, a little shader gimmick trick. If I was modeling this for real, I would have taken care of all these little poles that would tear up this displacement. But again, not a not a tutorial for that. So I really I really don't care. Uh, this is the model. It took about five minutes to make. It's not too tough. All right. I've got a weight map sitting on top of this stem so I can keep the colors separate. That's all. And you can see some of what's going on with this procedural layer. All right. I've got the, this is the basic model over here. Let me see. Let me turn this off so we can get a good look. Or turn this on, actually. This is the basic model. All right. There's nothing too complicated. But that's what the displacement is going to be cutting into and out of using the procedural texture. All right. Now the procedural texture, well, I'll turn that back on and show you, is this iris. Right. Looking on, looking at the top here. Right. You see the transform. Uh, here we go. It's this iris texture. Different properties you can play with those. This, this is not really what this is about. I've got it sitting in shooting straight down the top of this model right this iris texture is just nothing more than a kind of a starburst that has a point and everything radiates from that uh, you find that here you can see where that is change type Whoop. down here in the moto or enhanced moto textures there's a lot of these to play with and a lot of them have great uses let's see where is it I think it's geometric uh, there it is it's the iris right there you can tinker with that on your own but that's where you find it. Let me turn that off. Turn this off, and here's my color stuff, right? And that's just a little bump thing that we're not going through here. I was playing with that. But this is the uh, iris texture that I'm using. That's driving this thing right here. Now I set the thing up a little bit like uh, James did. Mutant Pixel. I'm using the texture map, right? I've got a displacement coming in here. I've got this in a separate group just so you can, it's easier to control. I mean, not easier to control, but easier to uh, see. So I did this. This is the gray stuff, right? Right here, these two. Oh, well, let me get this first. These two keys are my zero point, which is the model. These keys drive away from the model, push things out. These keys are going into the model, right? I've got these four set up here. So I put that gradient, or not the gradient, put the uh, texture on here. I set it up texture-wise, put it in the positions I wanted, right? right? But what I did was, instead of using a simple driver, I just created an instance of this texture. Right, just put an instance on it. You can see it's italic here. That means it's an instance. And set its effect to the displacement value. Right? You click that, you've got all your various things you can tinker with. But all I did was put this here. This is my controller. And it's making this happen. Right? Using this textual area, you can see the gradient here. This is what's happening, but I no longer have control because this is just an instance of that. The control is over here in the iris, right? This drives that. That's why I can't, I can't tinker with this, right? Because the keys are all over here, right? 
you'll see what happens in a moment like this right for instance if I move these over you can start seeing what happens to the model weird segmented kind of thing It'd be kind of an interesting way to make a bug I think well anyway you see what's happening there that's not too mysterious if I want more I can just drive it in and pull it closer to the surface of the actual geometry model right drive it all the way down I think you can even go more you can just keep going and going depends on what you're wanting right there is about good for me right lots of different things you can do here if you look close you can see where that line is right here huh oh let me get that control that a little better okay let me turn that out you see what's happening there so I go into my iris uh, where is it texture and I can come down here. I don't need this now. Uh, oh, here it is. The horizontal wrap, right? I'm using the same texture setup as, or the UV setup he was using, uh, Mutant Pixel, in his video. All right, the U part of the UV map. Right? I come down here. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. The horizontal wrap. I've got this repeating eight times around this thing. Uh, extreme example, there's 20. Interesting effects depending on what you're kind of wanting to do. Some ribbed hosing, you could actually use something like this to do that, right? It gives you a little variety visually. It's not all the same. That uh, iris texture lends itself to that. Uh, you want less, it repeats less, right? This dark stuff is this diffuse amount. I've got this on so I can see it, right? It's, it helps me see it and visualize what's happening. You could turn this off, put it to diffuse color, and it still does the job. You just don't see the uh, the grayscale, right? I'll go back to 20. You can see that it actually does that. Uh, I had it on 8. I think that was what I was happy with, right? Turn this back to a diffuse amount, right? And I've got this thing will always stay together because it's just an instance. Again, it's just a different way of doing a little bit of what he did, right? That's all. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of little vo uh, options you have once you have this going. I could duplicate this out again, instance again, change the effect type to play with specularity. I could use it to mask bumps. You can do a lot of things once you've got it. But overall, that's just a little quick modal moment on how to do a little driven displacement. Give you a little procedural action on some of what you're doing. Right, you can go back in and change this at any old time, right? But anyway, that's a moto moment. Again, go check out what James did on his video. I'll show it to you one more time before I walk away. It's this one right here. Right? Really clever stuff he does in there. All the way down here. I would check his channel out. Anyway, later on.